Normally, I'll start these videos off with an intro. I've written it down. And if you can read such. And now let's uh, get into the video. And let's start off with the question. How large of a bankroll is needed to be an optimal portfolio? Therefore, if, say, you're playing on a trading account, sports betting, poker, it's all the same. If you got $20, would that be an optimal size to play with? Well, the answer is obviously no. How about $27.8 million? And I hope that's well more than enough. So the answer that I will present has to be based on two different variables, one being variance as you must be able to handle any type of losses. And the second is for projected profit. You can't go for small ball. If you got a $50 balance, maybe you might make a couple or three bucks on the day while having your variance in place. Or maybe you'll try to make a few hundred on a five to one shot. And the variance is probably going to state you're going to lose, although maybe not. And I want to start off with variance. And I want to use an example. Again, this can be for a trader, poker player, blackjack counter. It's all the same again. If one starts a venture with a low but workable amount, say an example of 500, even 100 or 200 can work as well. Especially if you do the early strategy of taking aggressive early chances to build it higher, and then when you do, you take less risk. But if if you're able to raise a bankroll, say from 500 to 3,000, as the player was confident they would, if such falls to suppose 2,000, then a mindset that I like was how confident I was to make it happen. Okay, bad grammar. How confident was I going to be making this $500 move rise? I'm pretty confident. Well, how confident am I with a four times level within such? And of course, always understanding bankroll management when variance happens and you have down moves and up moves and how you're going to play. When you have down moves, how you usually want to lower your rate wager sizes up moves and it depends on the game protect your income as well as play for any large ones that are available that can happen in all games crypto trading poker where when you're on a roll one of the mistakes i think people make is they protect too much profits and they like even leave the game where a lot more profits can be had now let's talk about expected profit like the house at the casino expecting to win, so should anyone with a great game plan and the right game executed to such. For example, if you got a bankroll of $500 and you are playing with smart variants, you cannot do this trading Amazon and Google and the S&P 500 index because the trading fees would kill you. You could not pay the rake. You could go to a poker room, play 10 and $20 tournaments, stick $20 into a cash game, and be able to handle some losses and have enough expected profit, maybe not to give you a good daily income, but enough to be able to rise your bankroll. And as each level increases, I've got 500, 5,000, and so on and so forth. The amount of chances one should take as a level increases should be lower and lower. Thus, the amount you should return per day should also become lower and lower as a protection, of course, within one's bankroll. Furthermore, let's assume you are playing at $500 and you could make a little over 1% per day. Maybe one and a half even. You'd be making seven and a half dollars per day. But if you could do this 365 days a year, 
find a method to increase your bankroll by 1% a day. Especially, and it gets much better when it's one and a quarter and higher. Then it doesn't take long to get to the 10x level where the 5,000 number is. And now, instead of making just a few dollars a day, if you can get 1% on 5,000, you can make about 50 bucks a day. 60, 70. Now you're starting to get into income levels where you're getting minimum wage for a full day's work, and then then you can start to get an income levels of what doctors make and sport athletes make and so on and so forth if it's executed correctly within such. Next up, who has an advantage in this cryptocurrency trading game? Trying to increase your Bitcoin totals or Ethereum totals, whichever markets numbers you use. I, I, see, I see, do see a lot of people trading the US dollar tether as their base. And I can understand why, but not for me. So therefore, people who have traded in the old school, if you've been a trader for years, decades even, and you've been on E-Trade and all these other different sites, and you've done well, the volatility you can see within this game is much, much greater. The profit potential is higher, and instead of trading five days a week, it's seven days a week. And there's, you can take days off any time you want, and as a, a trader, you would know exactly what to do to position yourself to do such. People who are good at reading charts. I'm not the greatest. I'm not even better than satisfactory, I think, at reading charts, at least not in the morning. And I got a little bit of a cold as well, but that's not an excuse. Even if I'm feeling great, I would oftentimes write stuff like, people good at reading at charts. I think the sec first at has to go. But if you're good at reading charts, yeah, it'll work. Math, algebra, statistics. If you, if you, that game is for you if you can do that. And spreadsheets, especially when I mean, you're using the math formulas. And it, and you can use spreadsheets in your analysis and work. That can help you big time within an edge. Entrepreneurs, buyers, and sellers, especially if you're a precious metal dealer or if you are buying and selling in a pawn shop, a car dealer, a flea market vendor. It's, you look at the same mindset of buying and selling like you do there in this, again, you can get a lot of advantages. Other advantage players, gamblers, poker, sports. I've, seen a lot, I've heard, anyway, that a lot of poker players are getting into Bitcoin. Uh, tailors. What does that mean? People who copy information. So if you're going on there, going through my videos, other people's, other blogs, other Twitter posts and such, and you're good at finding people who know pecs. Oh, this, this coin's going to go up. Okay, I'm going to buy it. And uh, you don't know much about support levels, resistance, or any of those terms, but you know how to read what somebody says, and you know how to buy, and you know how to sell, and you see your Bitcoin profits coming in, it can work. There's a lot of people that make spectacular incomes betting on sports who may not even watch the games, but they pay for the information or they know how to find that information. So researchers is another way of putting it. And the practicing, this one is really, really big. Because as I mentioned earlier on, with the stock market, you, you can't go out and put like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 300 bucks and give it a shot. Yet, the only thing you really do is do a practice site or even a spreadsheet yourself. Oh, I'd buy this now and I'd sell it here and see how you would do. With a lot of these sites, there are very, very low minimum bets. I've seen 10,000 Satoshi minimum bets on sites like Cryptopia. 1,000 Satoshi is worth about 6 cents, so you're looking at about 
65 cent US minimum bet. About a $3 minimum bet on Bittrex. And some might say that is relatively high. But even if you are a small time player with a $500 bankroll, buying $3 positions definitely can help out in the variance game. And when you're practicing early on, what this does is it makes your mistakes cost you a lot less. So instead of buying a book for, say, $85, why not buy it for $0.21 cents or, or $1.20? Same sort of the theory here. Instead of putting in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, why not put a couple hundred and play around and see what happens? Oh, I, I, oh man, I made a mistake here. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, what did you bet? Five bucks? What did you lose? A dollar fifty? Yeah, cost you a buck fifty. Congratulations, it could have cost you more. And that's what I like about them. And then if you see, oh, this strategy is working and you're starting to win, and when you feel such, then you can start maybe increasing your bankroll size and then playing on from there. All right. I'll do charts in a separate video because. I didn't really think about how long this was going to take in time duration. Usually I do, and usually I'm not even that good at it. I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to do this video. It's going to be about 13, 14 minutes, and then I'm done what I'm doing, and I look at my time, and I see 21 minutes. Wow, I guess it took longer, I think, to myself. Well, I wasn't thinking of time, but I'm at 11 and a half. So then I'm going to... Uh, talk about, you know what, the Nova Exchange is actually like this kind of stuff. It's like classroom. So I'm going to move on to the Nova Exchange topic. And even the Smart Cash topic as well, because I don't need charts for what I want to talk about. But you, you already knew that I was going to talk about this longer because you can see the duration of time of this video is longer than 12 minutes. And within this exchange, they are shutting down if you don't have an account there, you cannot create one. And they've already uh, stopped Ethereum and Ethereum Classic transfers, or they're very soon to be doing such. But I thought of an idea, and I got out of Nova Exchange pre-fork on the Bitcoin Gold. And it wasn't only because of that, I noticed their site was getting slower and slower. And I was thinking afterwards, I'll see if it gets better, rejoin, or not rejoin, but deposit back if it's good again. And I even went yesterday to just, I would just even get my, uh, get my uh, history, but the site was so slow. I haven't been on it yet today. But my thinking is, if you have Bitcoin on the site, and if you are registered on there, you can still deposit Bitcoin on there if you wish. I'm not going to, I've thought about it though. And I still might to see if, if there's amazing buys available. I'm going to take a look. But you put in buy orders for codes like Bella, although that takes, it doesn't matter. It takes two days to send to Polony X, but as if that matters for me. Or any code that you can move to Polony X or Bittrex or Cryptopia or Coin Exchange or anywhere else. Because my thinking is people are going to be getting, they're forced to get rid of their coins. Now, getting rid of Bitcoin and Litecoin, I mean, that's pretty easy for them to do. We're not looking to buy the big major coins. We're looking to buy the moderate and small ones that are available on other sites. Because even though a lot of people can transfer them out, then I think it would be a good idea to try to buy them really cheap. Because say, for example, if there's a code Cryptopia or, or coin exchange or uh, any of the other miniature small ones, the Kui, you're able to sell at, say, just an, an example number of, say, 50,000 Satoshi. Place, place a buy order for 20,000, 15,000, even 30,000 for a decent gain. Or even if you can see on there that I can sell immediately right now on another exchange for, say, 50, and I can buy right now for 44 just right now and take it. It's not a bad strategy to take it and send it, especially if you know it's a code that doesn't take too, too long to transfer or one you're at least confident with as the time moves on. So for myself, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to check the site today and if it's workable. And I see it's really available, then I very well may put a deposit into Nova, try to buy what I can, move it to the places and take good profits. But if you don't have an account with them, then you have no way of playing on this exchange. And finally, let's finish this off with the smart cash. And I've talked about this a little bit. And not often do I ever come on here and tell you a play like so early, so spot, spot on early. But I can, I mean, I was minutes, maybe 20 minutes from the event when I noticed smart cash was something I really liked when it was trading uh, under, two, well, I was buying it under 200, leaving it at 200, then later in the day buying it up to 250. I dumped half my position yesterday at about 1500 and change because of, well, my position was double normal size and sometimes it's higher and I want it to be higher. I want to be three, four size position or three, four times larger than a normal bet. But I noticed a very large sell order on the coin exchange uh, so when I see something like that, that's oftentimes an indication the market may go down whatever amount of basis points. So I thought, okay, let's sell half. And then I see in the morning that HitBTC has added it to their exchange. Okay. So I bought uh, what I sold and I sent it over towards that site. Just something that I look at if you... Uh, for my case, I'm playing a code I don't know the fundamentals on. I've researched very little on it, but I understand very little within that side. It's about as good for me as my grammar. But mathematics, so I can handle that part. And I figured there was a lot of profitability within it, and it has already worked out to a lot of it. I mean, I barely have any of a position compared to what I had. I pretty much sold out, and I definitely sold it all, and then barely bought back in. So I realized that this uh, is a code that has very good potential. My original look at it was like, this almost looks like the early parts of Bitcoin. Maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, it was smart to buy Bitcoin at a couple bucks, wasn't it? Like, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not saying it is, but well, yeah, it was smart for me to buy it at 200-ish or so. And because I seen it goes to another exchange, I upgraded its status from something I want to probably get in a little bit later cheaper to something that might have a little bit of a push as it moves forward. I'll have a charts video later on, not immediately, but I will have one later on. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.